In one corner, we have Mark Zinno. Behind him, an evil empire that has bought its way to 27 World Series trophies. In the other corner, a far less imposing physical figure, me. Behind me, an organization that hasn't won the World Series since 1948. That is what we are dealing with this week on the Morning Wager. My Cleveland Guardians against his New York Yankees. What a fun week it should be on the program discussing this ALCS. Mark Zeno, thank you so much for allowing me to get through that intro. Uh, what would you like to say back to me after uh, those words? You're an idiot. <laughs> I thought you were going to be a little bit more self-deprecating and talk about uh, your organization that changed its name to the Guardians. Because they get all sensitive, but anyway, okay, that was that, that was, that was uh, unnecessary. Listen, we gave them the, the the baseball gods have given the morning wager audience exactly what they wanted. Mm-hmm. Me versus you for seven games. Uh, well, it's more like it's going to be five, but that's in the end or there. So, oh. um, it, it, I mean, we have to come up with a side bet for the show. Like, we we, we need we give us send some ideas, comments in the comment section of what the wager can be, and and and. We will agree. Let's agree now. Whatever we decide the wager to be, even if one game one is over, we don't figure it out by today. Uh, we'll have an answer at some point in time on what the wager should be, whether it's, you know, I'll send you a bottle of booze or something like that because I know that you'll drink it because, you know, if there's a rally burger and a bottle of booze, there's Brian Power yes. somewhere holding that booze above his head and celebrating. Um, yes. So, yeah, there it is. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Team Power uh, all the way. But nonetheless, uh, we can figure out some sort of wager here for the for the morning wager audience. So if you guys got some ideas, drop them. And don't be stupid. No one, no one's standing naked on a street corner with a sign. Like grow up. We're not doing that. But I nonetheless, have I have an idea. <laughs> no, I, I, I can't. I, I came up with an idea over the weekend. Uh, you know, since the Guardians are a deserved underdog in this series, yeah. If they beat the Yankees, you know what I want? I want to drive a tank. <laughs> I, I would I would love to be able to arrange that for you, but I don't have that kind of pull. Uh, you don't you don't have that kind of pull? I can't try no, the tank. You you, no. you you can't let I'm me not, drive the tank. I'm not the president. Oh. I'm just oh. a colonel. That's it. Oh. So there how are a lot fun of would that be? How fun I'm, would that be to see me driving the tank? Can you imagine all, that? You getting into a tank would make people laugh, let alone driving it. Okay, because it's not an easy endeavor for people it on isn't? your side. There's not a lot of six two tankers, six four tankers running around. Oh, it's, just, it's all cramped in there. Yes, it's all cramped. Okay. Oh, okay. It's, it's well, that was a fun idea. I know it was a fun idea, but um, uh, what I can do is send you a little tank to play with if you want. You know, we have those. work. I have a child. I oh. have like six of those. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk anyway. about game one of this thing. So, look, I, I want to drum up a lot of support for the Guardians. They are up against it. Manager Stephen Vogt emptied the bullpen in game five Saturday to get that win. What a moment it was when Lane Thomas hit that grand slam to go up 5-1. The guards hold on to advance. Uh, I'm going to take an approach that's a little pro-Cleveland. It's the only one I could kind of come up with. But you are uh, – you're thinking route here in game one for the Yankees. Let's get into our double play here. Uh, what, what do you got cooking here for game one? Yeah, listen, I, I think there's a lot of ways that I can attack this. Um and and I'm gonna just gonna throw a lot of stuff out here for the wager talk audience. So so pay attention. One, uh, I I will say I do like the Yankees minus the one and a half. Uh, that's not my official double play, but and I know Brian Power doesn't want to lay one and a half with the home team because well you know they may not get their ninth at bat. Well I don't give a rip. Okay. Um, don't I think the like Yankees. That. I think the Yankees offense here, which gives Carlos Rodon five point three runs of support per start, um, certainly will be effective. Uh, if you haven't noticed, the, the Guardians are starting this guy named Alex Cobb. Um, he used to pitch in the National League. I was doing some research. You know what I found out, BP? This is great. Uh-oh. Juan Soto is 7 for 11 against Cobb with four home runs. Ah! Four home runs. So, like, I will be going to the window with some sort of Juan Soto base prop or whatever it is. Four, 11 for 7, 7 for 11 with four home runs. Like, that's not good for the Cobb guy. Um, no. That's not good for corn on the Cobb or, or corn Cobb pipe or any kind of Cobb. Cobb County, which is where I live. So it won't be good for him. Um, nonetheless, just wanted to put that out there for the audience. I, when I saw it, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wait a minute. And this is a Yankees team, by the way. The, the lineup, because some guys have been in the NL. Uh, the lineup 
has a collective 955 OPS against Alex Cobb. Again, some of that comes from Juan Soto being 7 for 11 with four home runs. But nonetheless, and he's never faced Aaron. He's, he's faced Aaron Judge. Um, Aaron Judge has faced him 12 times. He's got just three hits and five strikeouts. So maybe the, although one home run, uh, maybe, maybe the judge, you know, sort of uh, impetus he's train keeps rolling on here. But God, I hope not. <laughs> Nonetheless, my official play here will be the Yankees going over their team total of three and a half. Uh, I think the Yankees score runs. We know this is a team that has sco- scored the six most runs at home in Major League Baseball, 4.8 runs per start. Uh, they've hit the second most home runs at home of any team in Major League Baseball. When you talk about their WRC+, plus, their top five, their ability to score runs, their seventh in OPS at home this year, everything lends to the fact that the Guardians, who, oh, by the way, do not want to have to use their bullpen early in this thing because of how many relievers they used in game five, um, or may give Cobb a little bit of a longer leash here. But the, the Yankees are not built to win 3-2 games. That's not who they are. We talked about this in the, in the game that they clinched over um, in the game that they clinched over over the Royals. Yes, that was a 3-1 final, but that's not the game that they want to win. They, and again, the runners with scoring position thing, that's got to come back to some sort of mean here. The Yankees have to get some hits at runners in scoring position, but with them being at home in that ballpark, um, a lot of those those uh, fly balls that went to right field that were pop outs would be home runs at Yankee Stadium. I'm going to take the Yankees over three and a half here. I don't think they win a game where they score less than four runs. So uh, I believe the Yankees are going to win. I like all the angles I put out there, but give me the Yankees over three and a half for my, my half the bell play. All right. Smash that like button if you're agreeing with Zinno and the Yankees. Uh, we will be talking Monday Night Football in just a moment, but my half of the double play, obviously, I have to try to drum up some support for my Guardians, and I will do so this way. Let's bet Carlos Rodon under 14 and a half outs. This is plus money. Zeno, look, the guards have one chance and one chance only to steal game one, and that is by getting to Rodon. Uh, even if they don't, I think he has a short leash. Why? Because Aaron Boone right now knows he has a much more rested bullpen, and he can go to that bullpen early. First sign of trouble, why not? Okay? So I think that's two very different scenarios. I know what you're going to say, that Aaron Boone's an idiot, okay? He is uh, I'm, idiot. Ho- I'm hoping he's not an idiot. I'm hoping he's smart, does the right thing. So, or that Rodon just gets rocked and he, and he gets pulled. So, uh, Rodon, he, look, you've ripped this guy for a large part of 2024. He gave up four runs in his lone LDS start uh, against the Royals, uh, a Royals team that is, doesn't have exactly the greatest lineup in the world. So, I think there's two sort of just vastly different scenarios where we can get to this, we cash this under 14 and a half outs prop. One, Rodon gets rocked. Two, First side of trouble, Boone just says, heck, let's just go to the bullpen, man. Let's pull this guy. We've got rested relievers, and let's do it that way. That's what I'm going with for yeah. my half of the double play. Uh, Rodon, under 14 and a half outs, plus 120. Smash that like button if you agree. I think you're wrong. Don't smash the like button because he's wrong. Give the thumbs down button. Is there a thumbs down button we can we can do? I'm sure, yeah, Joe Ranieri always has that handy when I'm talking, I believe. I think, but I think, uh, maybe. I think, I think it's well-deserved because you're wrong. No, now, I believe again, it is. I would. Tell I don't you think this. he's getting it. What he won't get one out. How about that? <laughs> well, how's that for a take? He, <laughs> Guardian, I, the Guardians I, run Rodon out after with without even getting it out. What do you got to say about I would that? Tell you this, I would tell you this much: if he gets through three, he'll get through five. Like if that makes sense. If he's able to get through three and get through the lineup one time without it being a complete bleep show, then they're going to let him. They're going to they're, they're going to run him out there. So, so you do not agree with my assessment that there's a viable scenario that he's doing okay, but Boone just pulls him early because he's got a more rested bullpen. You, you, you don't see that transpiring? No, because Boone's an idiot and always leaves the guy in one batter too long. So, okay. yeah, that's, you know. Well, don't do it tonight, Aaron. I'm just telling Pull him. Let's, I, Pull him. I, I, tr- I trust a fart more than I trust Aaron Boone, and I almost never trust a fart. That sounds like a personal problem. Okay, let's try on that note. Uh, we're going to get to Monday Night Football in just a minute, but thank you to everyone who joined Mark and I over the weekend for that three-day all-access. Yes. Uh, you were treated to a phenomenal Saturday where yes, we were are. a combined seven and one. Seven and we were one. A combined, the two of us were a combined seven and one. Uh, Mark, you had your 5% on Iowa. That was also a client play for me. It was shared. All the other plays did well. Uh, the only play that lost between the two of us was Pitt against Cal, for, which 
That's true. Pat Narduzzi is a moron. Pat yeah, Narduzzi is an idiot. He got out coach and I'm pissed off. And that kid, Eli Holstein, played his worst game of the year. Worst game. But he got totally out-schemed by Cal. I mean, Cal could do nothing. Cal was impotent on offense. Like, they literally could not do anything at all. And th they scored 17 points in the first half of that game. Didn't score a single point the rest of the way. Red zone pick at the end. Of the, uh, just, ugh. I hate Narduzzi. He's, he's one Italian I don't like. Go figure. I feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm in a Viagra commercial here with all your references of impotency. But uh, speaking of impotency, then there was Sunday. And uh, that was not good for either of us. Wow. Uh, I, I, there, you look at all the shows that I did. And I do a lot, and I do a lot of shows here on Wage Talk TV, as do you. And I, I think I hit just about everything I said in every college football game. Then the NFL came. I wasn't right about a damn game. Look, people that know the way I bet know if there's a week where road favorites are 8-0, no, old BP's not doing very well. And old P, I lost both client selections in the NFL yesterday. I don't even want to discuss the way I lost that under in Mets-Dodgers last night. That was horrific. Yeah. It was a real kick in yeah. the pants. So Sunday Thanks sucked. Everybody who Saturday it. was great. We, we, yes. we encouraged you guys to buy it on, on Friday to get the whole weekend. Uh, we should have said Thursday. That was on yes. us. That was that was. Yes. We got our days. We got our days wrong. We got our days confused, and we should have. We should have told everybody to buy it on Thursday. So next yeah. time we do this, buy it on Thursday, and just cut us off by by Saturday, and you'll you'll be much happier. But <laughs> thanks to everybody who pitched in. We, we we appreciate it. It was it was fun. It was a good weekend. O overall, it was a good weekend. Yes, still winning weekend uh, for yours truly, and uh, we roll on to Monday, where it's Bills and Jets, the first game post Robert Sala. For the New York Jets, will things be better? I don't know. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, this is a team that also would like things to be better because they've lost back-to-back -back games. I, I don't have it in front of me anymore. Oh, the Jets. No, the Bills. The Bills have lost back. The Bills have not lost three oh, straight games. What's that? The Both teams yelling. come in losers of two straight. Yes, they are. But the Bills haven't lost three straight in a very long time. I don't have the exact date. I thought I had it written down in front of me. I don't. That's my bad. But it's been a long time. That's all you need to know. So we're not taking a position on the side. We're not taking a position on the total. We're instead focusing on the prop market, as we often do on the show on the Monday. Josh Allen is going to have to carry this team, Mark Zinno, and we think he may do so with his legs, and he may find the end zone, something he's done quite a bit in the past against the New York Jets. Yeah, try not to overthink it here um, when it comes to a prop like this. Uh, this is a Buffalo team right now that as we sit here and we record the morning wager, no idea who's playing on offense. James Cook is questionable. Kahil Shakir is questionable. Um, you're looking at a team in the Jets that is number two uh, in defending tight ends and tight end receptions and yardage on the year. So that takes Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox out of the mix. And if you look at props early this morning, the Bills receiving props are, are, are off the board right now because they don't know who's playing. You know, it's it, we can't put receptions up there for anybody because we don't know if James Cook is playing or not. So they or, or the same for Khalil, Khalil Shakir. So this game, if Buffalo is going to win it, it's going to be all on Josh Allen. Furthermore, in 11 games against the Jets in his career, uh, he has seven touchdowns rushing, seven rushing touchdowns. There's six different games. One game he had two. Um, but given the fact that this game is expected to be tight. And oh, by the way, of those 11 games, guys, only two of them were blowouts. It was a 32 to six win last year at the end of last season uh, for the Bills and a 45 17 win back in 2021. Other than that, all these games have been 10 points or less, which means they're going down the wire and they're close. In fact, eight of those games have been um, one score games. When it gets down to the red area, Josh Allen's just going to do it himself, especially if these guys are hurt. Now, if they get the full complement of Shakir and Cook, it may hurt his chances to just do it on his own. But my guess is with a lot of these guys who haven't practiced, Khalil Shakir didn't practice on Saturday. James Cook didn't practice on Saturday, that they're all game time decisions. Allen's going to do it with him, do it, do it with his legs. Uh, so if he gets down to the red area, I trust him to just plunge it in on his own. We'll get a nice little uh, plus 155 here on an anytime TD for them, uh, for, for, for Allen. Let's roll with it. Uh, we did this last time with Jamar Chase on a Monday night game, worked out in our favor. Let's hope it happens here again. Oh, that Josh Allen prop was was outstanding, or a part of me that Jamar Chase prop was outstanding. Jamar that Chase, was cashed yeah. in what the first you know, three minutes first, of that game, first three minutes, I believe. Yeah. Yes, uh, but uh, Josh Allen he gets into the red area and plunges in, says Mark Zinno. Uh, don't know what to make of that, but uh, let's cash it. Josh Allen anytime touchdown plunge? is you. Yeah, yo, you 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 I said plunge. plunge. 
Oh, I you believe said you said plunge. Yeah, we'll check the tape. I, I think you said I plunge. I plunge much. I don't plunge okay. much. Not much. Okay, well, 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 Josh Allen will plunge for us. And that is your show best bet. Please, down in the comment section below, let us know how you're betting Yankees Guardians, how you're betting Mets Dodgers, the other LCS, both LCS. Uh, Chris, wait a second. Let us today. know how you're betting the Yankees because they're going to win. <laughs> you think you're tough, don't you? No, I don't. I just think the Yankees are better than the Guardians. There's a difference. Well, <laughs> yeah, you are, you are tough, so you can talk tough. I'm not tough. That's why I don't talk tough. I think we've got to go back to like 97 the last time that the Guardians, well, they were the Indians back then. Uh, beat the Yankees in a playoff series. You know, my was, dad, my, you know, <laughs> it was it was somebody who actually scored a run off Mariano Rivera. My dad, minutes after the, oh, here we go. I, and, oh, do we have, we have some late breaking news? Talk about comment down below uh, with your favorite baseball bets. So he did well in the game yesterday. I so. saw. Anyway, um, my dad messaged me. Speaking of 1997, he messaged me five minutes after the Guardians eliminated the Tigers and said, "G men getting swept by the Yankees." So he doesn't believe in them you, at all. They either. call him the G Man. Is that what well, they call him? I don't know. Oh. Maybe he doesn't want to say Guardians either. I don't know. It's what he texted to me. He's a seventy-something-year-old man, and he's texting. I don't know. Okay. I wish your dad. Drank. I wish your dad drank and got angry and belligerent because I think that would be hysterical. <laughs> well, that's. Nothing. I have that. Those you have the mark. I, I do enough, that for that <laughs> yes, enough for that for the family. Yes, I do enough for that for the family. All right. Subscribe to the Wager Talk YouTube channel no matter what you do in your free time. We appreciate your support. Click that bell for instant alerts and you get notified when we drop. Please smash that like button too. What I did. What? Just sit there and talk directly. I'm so proud of you. Still number one. Still number one. Still number one. Yeah, well, I'm number two. I'm number two. You know what I mean by number two? Complete stuff. Oh, my God. Number two. Thank you, everybody.